Oh, this is Tim and Karen from Stampin' on the Back Porch, and we're doing our podcast about creativity, paper crafting, and everything about life. Last week, I shared a bunch of quilt stories from our readers over in the Back Porch Stampers, and our sharers that were sharing all their things. And, and this week, I want to tell stories of five of my quilts. I have a vast quilt collection. I've been quilting them for many reasons over the years. I absolutely love quilts. So I selected five that have special stories behind, and I, each day for a week, we had a special quilt week, I would share a quilt and then create a card that was inspired by that. I think they go so well together because we're working with color, design, you know, picking out your fabrics. If you know a card maker, they're not short on paper supplies typically, and if you know a quilter, they're not short on fabric supplies, and many but, people <clears throat> do both. <laughs> Can you just say that? A card is made much quicker, though. <laughs> yes, and you know, that is one of the things that attracted me to card making because I love the contrast. You know, I would make a quilt a year and I'd spend the winter hand quilting it on a big frame. Um, but cards, you just can knock out and, you know, if they don't turn out, you're on to the next one. <laughs> so, uh, so I love that contrast. Beyond that, they both... I think if you're making a gift for someone, it's just very special because you're thinking about that person. Which brings me to the story of the first quilt I shared. But I have a flashback because I remember you now with your great big hoop mm -hmm. sitting in the living room on your Lazy Boy. Nothing has changed. That's right. Nothing has changed. <clears throat> I like my comfort. <laughs> me watching TV and you uh -huh. quilting and occasionally looking up at the TV. To this day, I Nothing cannot watch changed. TV and Tim Nothing loves to watch changed. TV at night. That's when I'm assembling <clears throat> cards. I'm always working on something or I'm on the computer. It's that I am not a TV watcher. It's very true. But it's important to Tim that we share that <laughs> yeah. time together. So I'm <laughs> starting to realize how superficial it is. <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. I occasionally not. And then I, then I say, did you catch that? And I'll say, no. no. And that's when I just rewind and say, pay attention. So, But back to the quilts. My very, very first quilt was made for you. Moi. Okay. Yes. So this was... In honor of what? Engagement or wedding? No, or? it was before we were engaged. Oh. You know, it was in 1973 and we were dating. Dating. And I had a roommate named Karen and Karen and I decided it'd be fun to make our boyfriend's quilts. Neither of us had ever quilted. So that's why the idea. Our third roommate, Sue, was going to do that too. Hers kind of turned out to be a pillow. Really wasn't her thing. <laughs> but Karen and I had a lot of fun making our quilts and just doing that at night. So, uh, uh, and Log cabin it was huge. It was beautiful. Yes. It still is. Well, it's very, very worn and faded now because we've used it for many, many years. But there's something about that softness of that old kind of mm -hmm. material that's really... You know, anyway, it's just a very fun, fun quilt to still have. And it was on our bed for probably, what, 20 years? Yeah. Yep. So, uh, and it's just really worn thin now. Most of the fabrics, this is an interesting story too, most of the fabrics were fabrics that I already had. They'd come from my father's store. We had a little variety store. It's called a V store in a town of 3,000. <laughs> a little one. Yeah, I'm, I'm using my hands to show how little the store was. That makes a lot of sense. But... But we had everything, you know, a variety store back in the day was, you know, I mean, now we think of our mega stores, but we had a little tiny toy section, a little tiny um, fabric section, which just kind of amazes me. So um, I did grow up sewing and using those, but I had never quilted. I did make my own clothes. So I took a lot of the yellows and browns and blacks. I just did the contrasting color. Now, I did not know until I shared this quilt, somebody shared that the middle square in a log cabin should be red and that stands for fire or that you know like the hearth of the home and I thought boy does that make an awesome like wedding gift or something I mean and you know I mean that that's news to me M mine didn't I don't remember what color green. oh green <laughs> green in the center <laughs> in, yeah. but anyway so I look over because it's still piled up for you here on the side here so a log cabin it just has that center square so I would take my my um papers and cut them into half inch strips. I did two different cards. I did a larger card with three fourths inch wide strips and then I did another one with half inch strips. So then for the half inch strip my square in the middle would be one inch and then I would cut the half inch at one inch so that would go on the one side you know turn just like you would do on a quilt do the next part that would be one and a half you know and so on all around the quilt and on one side I did the light colors and one side I did the dark so it was a really a contrasting pattern. You can see why Karen's a good card maker. 
<laughs> she had a lot of practice. Yeah, it. I guess you see, they do go together. <laughs> I uh, I just uh, lo- loved this idea. Um, someone had just said, and I, I I missed who it was that said this, said that she took a quilt class on making a uh, a log cabin quilt and everyone just picked their own strips and then they're just all making them together and I thought we could do a card class like that just a fun idea and they all turn out so differently so that is how I did this so I made two I tried to kind of match the colors so I just went through all my paper stack and just kind of picked the colors and then I made another one with totally different colors just because then I was on a theme it's just kind of fun to try something out and then try some other things so, Tim, I did have to say this to you. Jean Shoot said that she has a quilt on her bed that her grandma made for their wedding. That was in 1972, and it was made out of polyester. Whoa. Which is really interesting because I haven't seen yeah. very many polyester quilts. But. And it wouldn't be the same. But what a vintage quilt that would be now because, you know, I've never been a fan of polyester. That is hilarious. It would be just vintage. So I... You need would, to ask if you're watching, Jean, what colors it was, because you know it kind of fits into that polyester thing. But I thought it would wear well. Yes, it, it would. It would wear well. It, it would, probably it does not look like ours. You wouldn't, but ha- you wouldn't have to iron it after you washed it. So. <laughs> probably that was a great story. So anyway, I made a set of cards with the log cabin. Right, so that was quilt number one. Quilt number two that I shared was a quilt that I worked on with my son when he was about eight. Uh, my oldest son. We had we were homeschooling. And every now and then I kept a journal, not very often, but I was so glad I kept one during this time because I found um, the writing. So I'm going to read a few entries uh, from this. We read together Sam Johnson and the Blue Ribbon Quilt. Shout out to readers and if anyone's read that. And we talked about how designs are made and we use graph paper. So I drawn, we drew nine squares and then he could use markers and he could cut them you know, diagonally and make pictures out of them. So he designed a nine square quilt and he named them all. So the names were Fish Out of the Sea, Zigzaggers, Checkers, Shooting Arrows, Moving Fan, Skinny Marink, Two Santa, Hanging on the Hats. I think there's one more, but I remember what that was. <laughs> so next we measured his bed and then we planned how much fabric and then he could go through my fabric and pick what he wanted. And then we went to the fabric store. In those days, the big fabric stores had always had a table of on sale cottons. So it was, it was just great. And he picked out fabrics that had to do with mushrooms and fish. Those were kind of the theme, <laughs> the theme of the day. So that was just really fun. And then I showed him how to enlarge. So he had these patterns to en- take those and then enlarge them into a real life pattern. I cut out the material and then I had him take the pieces and arrange them to make sure they were how they wanted. Um, one of them, he was not happy. It was the hat pattern. And he, and he said, you know, it wasn't like my mind saw it. And I thought, doesn't that relate to card makers as well? I just absolutely love that. So I showed him how to rearrange the shapes and to find a way that was more pleasing to him. And once he changed it, he liked it. <laughs> so that was, that was really fun. Um, um, and, and what a fun memory. So then I stitched it and I embroidered in each of the squares the name that he had given to the pattern. So it was just, you know, so I took that out and made, there were um, eight squares, I think, in the quilt, and I made a set of four cards, so I used half of them. And I used colors, kind of represented what he were and the name, and I thought, what a fun, so that's gonna be a really fun special gift. I need to say something about Mm -hmm. Josiah, (laughs) because we lived in a house for 30 years where we raised our kids, and then we sold, and we live in Richfield now. But as a housewarming present and kind of a going away present from the other that the other house, he drew a very quilt looking picture that had angles and colors and he said it represented very graphic, yeah. Graphic, graphic and it represented our house that had a wheelchair on it because we had John in a wheelchair and it is and it still hangs by our front door, but it looks like a quilt block. Which I just thought of now. Ren, get the little comment from him because he left such a lovely comment in it. So I wanted to mention, Betty Fountain was saying that she, her quilt instructor showed how to do the same thing, make their patterns on squares, the color in with their fabrics, and design that way. So I thought that was really cool because I've never taken a quilt class or anything, so it was just pretty fun. And Patricia Eggers, when, as a teacher, she had a paper quilt making unit for first grade math. 
They loved it and learned, and I thought, whoa, okay, there's a cool, there's another cool teacher, I said, and things like that, just remember. <laughs> oh, uh, so the note, the note that he wrote was just, um, here for 30 years were our books and our music and our friends. It was here that our family was assembled, and it was here that our lives happened. <laughs> We've given our home to the mythology of time. What remains is this frame and the stories we will tell. Cool. And isn't that what life is about? The stories we tell. And even as we're talking about quilts today, it is the stories behind the quilts. It is the stories behind the cards. It's being a thought of by somebody. Very cool. That is so cool. Tim is sharing this picture, and I'm trying to tell him, you know, this is a podcast, so I'm not sure it's really... Oh. So <laughs> I'm not sure you're really going to enjoy seeing this picture. But they can watch it on a video, right? Uh, yeah, it, it is uploaded to YouTube. I'll see it so many ways. See? It's just kind of funny. But <laughs> the chosen few will watch it on video. So those blocks, those quilt blocks, are they, they look like, you know, it's a set of block cards that look like different quilt blocks, a set of different quilt blocks. And I thought, but it has this memory behind because it's quilt blocks that he designed and named. So just kind of a fun story. My third one is about a garage sale quilt. Now, a lot of my quilts have come from garage sales and this and that, but this particular quilt that has been hanging above our sofa for many years, I just love. It was a quilt top. It was... So it was never finished, and um, I, so I went to this garage sale, and there's a woman about in her 80s that had made this quilt, and it was her daughter and then her adult granddaughter, so three generations doing this big garage sale. And I can't tell you how sad it made me feel that she was selling for $20 this gorgeous quilt top, and neither her daughter nor her granddaughter was keeping it. Um, but. The wonderful thing about it was I just had this nice conversation with her. And she was showing me how she put masking tape over certain parts that she didn't think she had stitched um, good enough and that I could maybe want to redo that before I would assemble this quilt. Did you do that? <laughs> and I said, you know what? I love it. I love it just the way it is. And I said this. I said, I'm not even going to quilt it. This is going. I've been wanting to do this. This is going to go above my sofa. I gave her my address and said, you can drive by and see it over the sofa. Now, if this were today, I would have been much more aware of writing down her address, getting her name. Well, I'd send I'd make her, I'd send her the quilt card I made in honor of this quilt. Um, but I just wasn't thinking, and it was a day we went to a million garage sale, so I just had no idea, but it just stays with my mind. And what I do love about this story was how appreciative she was that her quilt was going to someone who was absolutely going to love it. And I thought, so that's kind of the other great part of it. But I just think of all the hours she spent, and all of you listening, you would all, we would all love this quilt. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so anyway, I did this one in honor of all of the many quilts that many of us collect over the time. And it was a more detailed quilt. It kind of had um, a, a lot of different kind of earth tones and it was beautiful. And so, and it was made of squares and then some cut into triangles. So as I was making this online, I just, I had all my little squares cut first. I think I did three quarter inch squares and then I cut them into triangles as I needed them as we worked along and I just kind of and I tried to kind of match the color gradient and it's just beautiful I just you know what a fun thing so that was actually my putziest quilt card that I made <laughs> next quilt eight years ago I was diagnosed with breast cancer and when I was going through that at the time our son was dating a woman from her, her parents lived in a different town in Minnesota and her mother, I never have met her mother. Her mother was part of a quilt group. And what was really interesting about this quilt group, it was a group of friends that got together. They never knew when they started to quilt who the quilt was going to be for. This was kind of how they worked. They just knew that sometime, at some point, over creating the quilt, a name, someone would come into their life who this quilt was before. And I got to be the lucky person. And I got from them the most gorgeous blue and white quilt all done in 1940s vintage dress prints. Now I love vintage anyway, so it's just a, but it was just a stunning, stunning quilt. And I hold that, that is just such a special place. And to think that I never met those women, they mean so much in my life. I am so grateful for that group. And I love their story of how they gather and 
just expectantly wait for something to happen. And my goodness, there couldn't be a more perfect quilt for me. It also was done on a log cabin type style, but a little variation. It had red in the middle. It was a blue and white quilt, but the little squares in the middle were red. I love, love, love that. So I took the same idea and I took vintage looking paper and I, I used the paper from the Boho Blossoms. But I used instead the quilt block just to make a difference since I'd done the log cabin, the fence rail quilt block. So those of you who are quilters that know that. And it gave a very, and then I range it, so it gave a very similar effect. And I thought, I I love the, quart, the card that I made and I love even more what it represents. And that will be another fun, easy card to do in many other things. And then the, fa the fifth quilt, <laughs> zero to five, one of my team members, Lori Bontrigger, made a wall hanging for me out of little tiny squares. And again, it's blue and white. It's around this blue and white theme, but I just love it to celebrate my million in sales. And just, she wrote the sweetest note in cloth and stitched it all in the back. And I think, oh, that is something so important to do that most people don't do. So it's just something I want to put out there because then the story will never be lost. I thought, you know, I just treasure stitched. that. Was, the note was stitched. The note was, no, written. the note was written, written. on cloth. Okay. <laughs> but the okay. square of the story was stitched. Was stitched. <laughs> Otherwise, that would be as much <laughs> work as doing a quilt. No. Be, okay. yeah. yeah, so we can clarify. But I love how the story is attached, and I love that... Um, you know, I, I I love that put in there. So if you are a quilter and, you know, lab quilts, anything, oh, just, you know, do that thing in the back because I thought it is the history and the stories of what we share that are just so fun. So I made little tiny squares and did that. That was really fun too and just kind of arranged them in the same shape and it looks like your quilt. So I do have, I will put a link in the show notes where you can go see a photo of all these quilts, you know, if you're interested in that. But my biggest thing here is just to talk about how all of our creative ideas, everything intertwines. We get inspired by so many things and quilts and cards are just a great inspiration back and forth. And they make you think of all the people that have come into your life that have just been a blessing to you, the memories. Yeah. It does. Any other thoughts? <laughs> Put me on the spot. No, I've always got thoughts. <laughs> But you, I am very appreciative. Tim loves our quilt collection too. So yes. I said it is, it is all just, and we do love vintage. We have a trunk from Norway or Sweden. It was from my family. We always thought it was Nor Norwegian. Then my Norwegian <laughs> relatives were here and they looked at it. We wanted them to translate the words on it. And they said, I think it's Swedish. It doesn't look like it. It's, it's not Norwegian. <laughs> but the year is, it's all rose malt, yeah. inside and out. And the inside hasn't faded. The inside is just absolutely so, stunning. The outside is faded with age, but it's lovely. I love that look. 1814. 1814. Wow. And then it has a woman's name. She said it was a name. So it probably would have been the name of Over the relative. Years who's, ago. Yeah, which is just amazing. And it's our place of honor in our living room. And it holds this wonderful quilt collection. <laughs> so. Thank you all for listening. This has been really fun talking about quilts and you know, all of the crafting. This is a podcast about creativity and our daily life and how we use our creativity, our crafting to make a difference in other people's lives and all the memories and the ways that we've been blessed. So thanks and yep. have a good week. Bye. Bye.